Have you ever wanted to create a piece of furniture that has layers and textures only using paint and you completely transform it into something almost Cinderella, fairy tale like Stay here if you guys wanna see how I did that to this piece. Here's what the clock looked like before. We are, my client wants to go for kind of a cottage, country cottage, shabby chic look. So we are gonna do a major glow up on this. I cleaned the piece entirely with sugar soap. And so I just cleaned it all down and got it all clean and ready for the would you bend and the paint that I'm going to be using. You can see how gross it was. I also went over it with water just to get any residual sugar soap off. That way I don't have any adhesion issues, but I'm going to be using a would you bend trim on this. And then I'm going to be using these little core bells that are would you bend as well. The first thing that you need to do is you need to heat this up really well and that will make it flexible. So you can see how the coil is not flexible until you heat it up. So you wanna heat it up first, and then what I did is I measured it to size and I used a razor blade and I just cut for the length that I wanted. It will harden while you're working on it, so just make sure that you keep it warm. Some people put it on a skillet. I like to use a heating heat gun. You can use a hairdryer, whatever works for you. I'm using my heat gun to heat this would you bend molding up. And what I'm doing right now is it's a little too wide for that space. So I'm gonna trim it with scissors. And when you heat it up, it makes it much easier to trim it and less likely to crack. And so if you do need to trim it, you wanna make sure that it's warm. That way it makes it much easier to cut it, whether it be with scissors or a razor blade. Now I'm going to keep it warm and I'm going to place it in that little area right there at the top. And the edges, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut those at a 45 degree angle. And that way, all of the pieces around the edges will come together nicely in an angle and look more professional. Once you have your wood you bend molding trimmed and fitted to your space, you can use wood, wood glue or sometimes I use quick and thick depending on the surface, but this is wood, a wood surface and wood you bend is wooden. And so I put wood glue all around, all on the edges and spread it to the ends. And now I'm going to heat it up as well and push it down and make sure that is flush to the surface. You wanna make sure that once you put the glue on, you also heat it up again to push it down and make sure that it is completely adhered to the surface. I am gonna continue this process around the whole edge. I will put it on the top where the clock face is, and then there's these little corbels that I'm gonna put on the side. So you'll see those later on in the video. All it is is would you bend, and you apply it the same exact way that I'm applying this trim. Today I'm gonna to be using a paint that I have not used in my videos before, and it is Annie Sloan's chalk paint. So this is the original chalk paint. She's been around since 1990. We are gonna use Chicago Gray on this, and I'm gonna put one coat of Chicago Gray all over this entire piece. I just wanna let you guys know, I am not sponsored. This is not a sponsored video. I do not have an affiliate link with Annie Sloan. This is a video that I wanted to do because I did use Annie Sloan a long time ago, and she reformulated everything and reformulated her wax. And I am very, very happy. I am pleasantly surprised at how well the coverage works and I really like her wax and it doesn't have a smell. So the paint and the wax do not have smells to them, which I really like because I suffer from migraines. And so I gotta say, I really like this paint for this look, this layering and this old world look. 
So I guess it's safe to say that I am happy that I have started using this paint again. And you guys are going to see many more different paint brands that I'll be using. And then hopefully I'll be able to hone in on a few and just use those ones and not jump all over the place. So you guys let me know if you want me to try different brands. But the next thing we're going to do is use Lewis Blue. And I'm going to just dry brush over the entire piece with this color. I'm gonna allow it to dry. So I allowed the first layer to dry. I'm gonna allow this to dry after I dry brush. And then I'm gonna go back in with the Chicago gray and do another layer. And so what this is doing is that this dry brushing is adding layers to this piece. So that way later on when we distress it and pull it back, you're gonna see those layers. And this also adds just a slight bit of texture and creates this really romantic country chic kind of old world Cinderella-ish look on this piece. Okay, as you guys know, I love my blending. And so you can see that the piece looks a little bit more blue. You're not seeing things. I did test it a little bit before I did it on camera, but I'm gonna show you exactly how I got that. So I'm taking Oxford Navy, which is a navy blue, and I am just dry brushing it over that wood you've been molding and in the corners. And what I'm gonna do, I am not using any water. So you guys know if you've watched me before, when I blend, I use water a lot. I did not do that for this one. So I did sort of a dry blending where I took the paint and just used the moisture of the paint to blend in together. So now I'm taking the Lewis blue and I am going to dry brush over those areas again, but lightly. And then I'm going to do circles so that I can get that color to become a, the Oxford Navy is going to be lighter, but that Lewis blue is going to also add that shading effect in those corners. So you can see that this piece is now much more blue than it was before. And that is because I went in with that Oxford Navy and just tested it first before I put it on camera. Although I probably should have just showed you guys because you know, I'm all about showing you my mistakes, but I do really like this paint for blending. She does not have black in her paint and so these colors blend really really nicely and the open time of the paint is it's fairly decent so you can layer these paints on top of each other and still blend them with the moisture of the paint you can use water but it's not necessary so you see i'm just doing the oxford navy i'm gonna go over it a little bit and just kind of add that little bit of shading and this just really adds even more dimension to this piece The last color I'm gonna take is Old White, which is kind of a, a cream color, and I'm just going to dry brush that over all of the moldings, so that way we can just kind of light it up, lighten it up a little bit, and again, add just another layer of dimension on there. That's what we're doing, is we're kind of just dry brushing and dry blending all these paints to create this texture in this old world look. So use a light hand when you're doing this. You don't need to mash on it, just use even cheap chip brushes will work because all you're doing is just layering this paint on top of each other. I knew that I could not leave that front panel just plain. So I am taking one of Redesign's decor stencils in Elegant Lace. It's the perfect size for it and I'm just gonna lay it down and I'm gonna start with my Lewis Blue brush and I'm just going to stipple that on the top and go all the way down. And now what I wanted to do is kind of have a gradient feel. So I did that with the light blue first and then I started adding a little bit of the old white in there. And so that way we had different blue colors coming through and then at the end what i did is i took the oxford navy at the very top and kind of 
went over the top with it and then went over it with my Lewis blue brush and went over it with my old white. And so that way it adds kind of a ombre gradient look to that stencil. Here's what the stencil looks like now that I put the clock upright. And I'm gonna take my three x four electric ray and I am going to do some distressing. So I already did a little bit of distressing, but I wanted to show you how it brings out those layers. So you can see the lighter colors and you can see some of that Oxford Navy and the darker colors. This wouldn't be an old world country chic finish if we didn't distress it. And also my client wanted, to, wanted it distressed. So that's what I did. I took a 10, mil 10 millimeter rad pad, a fine rad pad, and I just went over the entire piece to really show all those layers. You can see the dimension on here. And I also went over the stencil so I could kind of smooth it out. And it, what it does is it just smooths the stencil and makes it all kind of just blend in together. This would not be a glam up, glow up, if we did not put some gold gilding wax on here. So we are using Redesign with Prima's Decor Wax in eternal now this is an older jar and so now they come in little squeeze tubes but still it's the same it's a really pretty gold and so i'm just dry brushing that all over top of all of the trim and all of the little moldings and that way it can tie in the face of the clock the face of the clock is a bronze gold and so this will tie it all in and then it just adds to that really just gorgeous romantic look on this piece Last thing we're gonna do is seal the chalk paint. You're gonna see right here how putting that clear wax on there really richens the color. So this paint does need to be sealed. So I'm gonna wax on this entire piece and then about 24 hours later, what you wanna do is buff it to a sheen and it looks really, really pretty. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Here is the piece, oh, it's pretty tall. There it is. I'm gonna have some stage pictures for you guys after this. Okay, all the colors that I used will be in the description below if you didn't catch it in the video. Thank you guys so much for watching, happy creating, and I'll see you guys later, bye.